and, and ended up onto the beach a little bit. Well, the, the guys, um, it was, the boat was canted over to the starboard side. They couldn't use their 50 caliber machine guns from that position, so they all jumped off the boat, the, the, the UDT crew and, and the swift boat crew, and they were hiding down along the hull. Using, uh, they ended up in a hand-to-hand -hand, uh, throwing hand grenades, and and the VC were throwing hand, hand grenades back. And the the last boat ahead of PCF 43 was PCF 38. They were the only ones to see the 43 get hit and go into the Zambler site. They turned around and were coming back into the kill zone to help, and they immediately got hit by two B 40 rounds. Um, one of them went into the pilot house and injured the, uh, the, uh, uh, the skipper, uh, Tom Gilbert. Uh, but he managed to get back to the aft steering uh, on the fantail, uh, trying to steer the boat. And they got hit by another B-40, which knocked out one of their engines and their rudders jammed full left. So they just circled around and out of control. The crew managed to establish a, an emergency steering to get them, to get them out. Uh, but they, they couldn't help the 43. So they were trying to tell someone. I kept hearing their voice, and, and it was, as I said, chaotic conversation. So I could hear 43, book, but I didn't know what it meant. And no one was responding. So I said, we got to do something. So we backed into the river and started heading up to the ambush site. And Chuck Moan on PCF 103 backed in and was going with me. So I thought, boy, you know, this is, at least someone's coming with me, but I was scared. Uh, it, it's one thing to get into an ambush when you don't see it coming, but when you know you're going into it, it's different. And the first time since I'd been in Vietnam, I put on flak pants, uh, which are sh short trousers to protect your, uh, your lower extremity. And, um, so as we're headed up the river, I hear the Seawolf helicopters report into the uh, officer and tactical command that they're orbiting overhead. Well, the, this, this lieutenant commander, uh, or this commander, uh, Coast Guard commander, he said, I need you to evacuate my wounded. And, and the, the Seawolves replied back, you know, we're loaded with rockets. We're too heavy to take on any weight until we get rid of these rockets. And he said, well, just unload them anywhere north of the river. So it was obvious that and he'd only been in country two weeks. Uh, and he's got chaos all around him. And, um, and, and so finally, PCF 38's message got through. And he suddenly realized that the 43 boat was back there aground and he asked the Seawolf helicopters to, uh, to provide cover. When I heard all of that, I reported that. I said, this is 6-7 with the 103, and we're going to be there in two minutes. And the OTC said, I want you to turn around and go back and pick up your Marines, bring them up the river, and insert them short of the ambush. Well, I knew this, this order was wrong. I mean, we're almost there. We could help. But... Um, I also knew that, that in, the, in, the, uh, in the middle of, of battle, you, you've got to follow orders, uh, even though I knew it was wrong. But to be honest, the real reason I turned around was I was scared. And, and it was more of that, and I used that order as an excuse. Um, so then I heard um, the OTC saying, we got to get somebody to go back and help them. And, uh, Bill Schumanine on the five boats said, uh, wait a minute. He said, I'm offloading some dead and wounded, and then, and then we'll go. And another boat said, we, we've got too many wounded to man our guns. And so finally, Bill Schumanine says, I'm going back. And he started out, and the OTC said, wait a minute, I don't want you to go alone. And he, on the 31, went with him. They got there. Using the Seawolf helicopters and their guns, they suppressed the enemy fire long enough to get the wounded and the dead off 43, and the crew rescued, got out of there. And, uh, and then, all of a sudden, we hear this voice, and it's Captain Hoffman. His call sign was Latch. Everybody knew that call sign. And it was so surprising to discover he's in, a, he's in one of the Seawolf helicopters above us. So he and the OTC are trying to decide what to do. 
and uh, the, the, the OTC said, you know, maybe we ought to exit, maybe we ought to get out of here. And Captain Hoffman said, PCF-43 is on fire. With all those explosives and the, and the mortar rounds and, and, and the ammunition, it's a risk that it's going to explode. And if you are anywhere near it, you, know, you're, you would be in harm's way. So finally they made a decision that they were just going to hunker down there and spend the night with all these Marines to provide a, a defensive perimeter. 20 minutes after they had rescued that crew, the uh, PCF-43 began to explode. The SeaWorld pilots were reporting it and it was just, you know, their voices were exuberant with how violent these explosions were. And uh, I mean, that was the death of the SeaWorld.